Thank you very much for having me up here. Uh, so this talk is uh, about Laravel, which I want to present to you guys as an option for a backend to your amazing Vue front end. Um, now, we're, we're all here because we're passionate about Vue, but that's only taking care of one part of your application. Um, you know, we need to have a back end for our applications as well. Now, before I can, is my screen up there now? Can you give it? All right, here we go. So they gave me eight minutes for this, so I'm going to start the timer right now, and we're going to keep an eye on that. Uh, so for, uh, for a lot of you developers, we're going to look for a backend solution. Uh, JavaScript and Node are going to be our, our comfort zones, so it's going to be really common to go for something like Nuxt or Express for your backend. Uh, Nuxt is really great. We use that all the time in our company as well. Uh, but I want to propose that for people here, if you haven't checked it out before, take a look at Laravel. Uh, Laravel is a PHP framework. It's a different language, but do not be intimidated by that. There are a lot of syntax similarities between JavaScript and PHP. So I think the transition is actually very easy for people to do. Uh, Laravel is a hugely, hugely popular framework, by far the largest framework in the PHP ecosystem. It's got hundreds of millions of downloads. The core framework package has something like 76,000 stars on GitHub. And according to the JetBrains developer survey in 2023 for PHP developers, uh, of PHP developers using framework, 61% were using Laravel. So it's hugely popular. It's been around for many, many years. Uh, it's, it's widely adopted, widely supported. Uh, so why would you choose Laravel? Uh, well, for, for uh, for first, from a developer standpoint, it is very well documented. Uh, for me, this makes a really big difference knowing that the documentation is there and reliable, and it provides great examples. Uh, it's, it provides a really good developer experience. So as a developer, I know I'm not going to be struggling trying to implement things. And the most core things that we have to tell everyone when we're trying to sell something, uh, it is performant, it is secure, it is stable, it is battle tested, and it is not going anywhere. It's been around, it's going to be around for a long time. Uh, one thing that I really appreciate about Laravel, particularly when you're comparing it to something like Express, is that Laravel has the tools that you need built into it. If you pick an Express server for your backend for your view app, uh, you're going to be starting from scratch. You're going to be figuring out how you're going to do your routing. You're going to want to connect to a database. So you're probably going to have to pick an ORM. Uh, maybe you're going to want SQLize or Prisma or now Drizzle's on the scene. There are lots of others. And you're going to have to look through all those things and figure out which one's going to work for you. Some of them are better than others. Some of them are still not in version 1.0 yet. Uh, and and it, the same problems are going to come up for everything that you're going to try to connect to. If you're going to want to do caching uh, or queues, there, you're going to have to find solutions for all of these things of varying quality and success. Laravel has all of these things built in with the Laravel way to do things, and the Laravel way to do these things is good. Uh, Laravel's ORM is called Eloquent, and it is by far the best ORM that I've ever used, and I've tried quite a few of these things. Laravel has things that you're going to need to, for building your apps. It's got caching, email, authentication, sessions. Uh, I've been doing web development for 15 years. I still do not trust myself for security and authentication. I am always going to try to pass that off to somebody and to some platform who's going to know that better than I am trying to implement cookies and, and JWTs myself. Uh, Laravel's got support for lifecycle hooks and queues and file storage and S3 access. And hey, you want to do local file storage? You want to store your files in S3? It's just an ENV change to determine where those files are going to go. Uh, so how can we use Laravel with our view apps? Uh, well, the easiest, the, the, the way people are going to think about this first is having an API endpoint that your view apps are going to be calling. That's a very traditional way to get data from your backend. Uh, this works well both for a standalone view app, or maybe you want to use Nuxt as a, and have a Nuxt server or static site generation for your front end, and then have API endpoints from your Laravel backend that are going to pull data uh, to display that in the front end. But separately, Laravel actually has fantastic integration with Vue as a monolith application with a glue package called Inertia. 
Uh, and when you do this, you get a Laravel managing your routes and your routing for you, but you're app loading as a view SPA, a view single page application. We talked about different rendering modes earlier today. So what I'm gonna do now in the last three minutes and 25 seconds that I have here is show you very quickly how to set up a Laravel app as a new developer, and I'm going to do it while reading the documentation because I can never remember how to do any of this stuff. So let's take a look here. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna set up a new Laravel app. We'll go straight to the documentation. Uh, we're going to create a new Laravel app, scrolling down here, creating a Laravel project. We're gonna use Composer, which is a PHP package manager, to set up our Laravel app. So I'm gonna say here, I'm gonna choose CD to my desktop because that is the best place to run your applications. We're gonna make a view app called ViewConf, or sorry, a, a Laravel app, I'm gonna call it ViewConf. Now this is tethered to my phone. We're gonna see how this is gonna go. Uh, and we are downloading the packages that are required to set up our Laravel app. Now, when you're a new developer and you wanna get started, you're gonna need a PHP server in your local development environment. Laravel provides a utility called Herd, Laravel Herd, uh, which I have installed here already. I'm gonna pick my desktop folder as the main site, the main folder that's gonna contain all of my Laravel projects. So I'm gonna select this here. When I do this, this configures my PHP environment for me and sets up a URL, which is gonna be now viewconf.test. I can go back to my browser and actually open this up, viewconf.test. My Laravel app is up and running on my machine. This is the first time set up for this. Now, this is just a basic welcome page. There's not anything too exciting here, but I know that I'm gonna to have to set up logins, user registration, authentication, password reset emails, profile updates. I don't wanna do all of that, and I have to do it over and over and over again. Luckily, Laravel provides us with some great starter kits. So I'm gonna go back to the documentation and search for starter kits on here. The one that I wanna use and recommend for everyone who's new in the ecosystem is called Laravel Breeze. Uh, we're gonna to go to the installation section here and see that this is another composer dependency to install. So I'm gonna go back to my terminal, cd to my viewconf project and run that command to install Breeze as, the, uh, as, a, as a dependency for this package. Now this is actually going through and setting up, it's gonna set up a SQLite database for us as well, but it's very easy to change this over to MySQL or Postgres. Um, and it's, let's see here, and uh, it's going to uh, set up the migrations for me and also install Tailwind and Inertia and get view ready for, uh, for running an SPA. Now, I wanna go down here and do the breeze install command down here, but around PHP artisan breeze install. It's gonna ask me how I wanna do this. View with Inertia, definitely. TypeScript, of course. PHP unit, oh, definitely, we want all of these things. This is going through and installing this now, setting this all back up. And this should be done in just a second. It's copying over all of the view components, installing Tailwind, the other things that I'm need to get set up. It's gonna run these migrations for me to get my database up and running. How are we doing on time? 32 seconds, let's see if I can get this done. All right, this is finished. Now we're gonna go to our PNPM install to install our, uh, our JavaScript dependencies. PNPM run dev to get Vite running. This is going back on here. If we go back to our Laravel app, I'm gonna reload the page. This is all set up. I now have my full view SPA running with sessions, user registration, password management. I can go in and do all this. The database is up and running already, and it's that fast to get started with your database uh, and Laravel. Oop, there's the alarm going off. Let's stop that. Uh, and getting the entire app running that fast. I'm gonna log in. Set my password to a very secure password and I'm in, I can edit my profile, the database tables are all configured, uh, and this code is actually done just as an extremely standard view SPA that you're used to seeing. If I take a look at this in here, this opens up to the readme, which of course I'm not going to read, uh, and we're going to go to resources, JS, pages, just like what you would have in Nuxt. Here's our dashboard. It's a totally standard view SPA at this point, with Tailwind already set up. It's that easy to get started with Laravel, Inertia, View, and Tailwind. I highly recommend it. And that is my pitch to you today. Thank you very much.